just joined. Um, our topic today is the purpose driven tweet. And we have some amazing guest speakers. I saw one of the one of the people that joined the call said, I'm here, I hope to learn a thing or two, and trust me, you're gonna learn more than a thing or two. Um, I have with me, I think we're gonna do this on a first come, first serve basis, right, Toby? Yeah. And so, as you know, we can only have like 10 people interacting, and um, well, the rest of you amazing people get to watch or listen, so when it's time to add people, Toby will add the first 10 who joined on. Um, so if you if you are there, if you're watching on YouTube, I don't think he can add you, right? Yes, but they have a question and answer box. Okay, so yes, there's a question and answer box. So if you want to ask me any questions to the speakers or to me, just write down your question, then they will appear um, right away. Okay, so we take this off. This is the our topic is the purpose driven tweet and and because it says tweet doesn't mean it's actually limited to Twitter. No. Um, the social media week is for every form of social media. And social media is websites and applications used for social networking. So it could be Facebook, it could be Instagram, it could be Twitter, or it could be LinkedIn. Whatever works for you, whatever floats your boat, that's what we're talking about today. So I have two people with me. I cannot see Carrie right now, but I can see Tina. She's on standby. She looks so cute there. <laughs> Okay, Tina is the dean and owner of Paul Mitchell Schools uh, spread around the United States of America. She's, she's, she's our guest and she's like my secret weapon because I want her to tell us the mind of the employers as it pertains to social media. I know a lot of us know that, oh my God, do my bosses actually look up my social media feed and things like that. She's actually going to tell you what 60%, if not 90% of employers do with their employee social media uh, posts or tweets or, she, she's taking us behind the scenes as it were, okay? so. She's going to give you an expose of what happens. Um, and she, when I say she is, it's because she's not the only one I've heard this. I've sat down with business owners who literally tell me how they use social media to monitor, as it were, their, their staff or get to know more of what's going on in the people's lives. And it's not spying per se. It's Sometimes it's like on a need to know basis. Um, there's a, I put on Facebook in the invite to the social media week. I'm trying to get there so I can see it. Yeah, when I said it's not spying, it's, it's, it's a necessity right now. Um, on a study done by Generation Y expert Dan Schrabel, he said, 92% of employers are using or planning to use social networks for recruiting this year. And a third of hiring managers said they have found information on social media that has caused them to hire and especially not to hire a candidate. Okay, and, and the study lists of the things they look at. They look at if your way of communication Things that people, even the way you abbreviate your words on social media. Um, so it's, it's not what it was before that you say, oh my God, my boss is spying on me. Right now it has become a necessity and I can see Carrie here. Hi Carrie, he is just, I can see him over here. So yeah, so Tina is the, she's coming from a CEO's point of view. So she'll give us the behind the scenes of what business owners do with it. Now, 
Harry, on the other hand, is my other secret weapon because okay. Harry left his day job to pursue his dream job of igniting souls. And through his writing, speaking, and coaching, he helps individuals and organizations to clarify who they are, why they're here, where they should invest their time and energy. He has an amazing platform called Day Job to Dream Job. And and I have sat under Carrie and learned from him. And when I say Carrie can literally move you from clutter to clarity, I mean it because I have seen him do it, even for me. Um, and another reason why he's so good at it is because he struggled to find his own distinct voice and passion. As a young man, Carrie suffered from severe stuttering, depression, and self-injury. Today, as a transformed man, he invests his time helping others to achieve their true potential. He's the founder of Redeem the Day, that serves the business community. He's also the founder of Igniting Souls, which serves the nonprofit community. And he's a founding partner of the John Maxwell team and an author of several books. And is he's like the secret weapon of other authors that have gone on to sell like best-selling books. So this is like the muse behind the book and and he's here to talk about like I said he he specializes also on a platform called from day job to dream job and if you go on Carrie's social media network you don't really need to guess what he's about you you know you know from looking at it and and from the branding perspective he's here to talk to us about that about um, what your social media tweets and posts and platforms says about you and, and your brand and how to go about it. He and his wife Kelly are blessed with three amazing children and he's calling in from Columbus, Ohio. Hey. Welcome, Carrie. Hey, thanks. It's great to be with you and Tina. Amazing, amazing people. Awesome. Oh, by the way, I forgot to say Tina is calling in from the sunny island of Marco in Florida. She's in Marco Island, Florida. And I say sunny island because it's sunny to them, but I've been here and it's cold to me. So <laughs> the, we'll just keep that sunny in perspective. So uh, just to kick things off, we will go to Tina. Um, hi, Tina. Good morning, everybody, or afternoon, or evening, wherever you are. Great to be on the call today. Mufan, you reminded me of Undercover Boss. I don't know if you've ever seen that or not, but <laughs> social media is such a great way for us as bosses to go undercover to find out really what's going on with our staff and find out way, ways that maybe their performance is lacking. But, you know, the National Relations Board, uh, Labor Relations Board, really set some laws last year in the United States, and there's 36 states, including one of mine, I have Paul Mitchell schools, uh, three of them to be exact right now, and hopefully by next year I'll have seven, but uh, they've really set some standards that we cannot um, hire based on social media. However, I, I will tell you that I, when I am interviewing, I do ask to see, and, and if they don't want to show me, I just kind of keep that into a factor as well, too, but I do ask them to really, you know, include me in on their Twitter or their uh, Facebook page or Pinterest or Instagram because in our Palmental schools, you know, we have 18 to 24 year olds plus in our schools and and uh, the thing is, is they're on social networking and I'm a baby boomer and and uh, guess what? As a baby boomer, I have to learn how to social network. I two years ago I said no, 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 I'm not going to learn how to use this and and I said you know what I better because I need to be able to interact with my students. Social media is powerful. As a Paul Mitchell school owner, my job is to get enrollment in my schools, and that's how we get it. Is usually through social media. It's not through advertisement. I, you know, I've done billboards. I've spent thousands and thousands of dollars with newspapers, with radio ads, with billboards, and none of that works, I can tell you right now. The best, obviously, is word of mouth and just treating somebody great, obviously. But social networking is such a great tool and so it's such a powerful tool. And if you use it in the right way, it, 
And honestly, Mofan, I just had a reinvention meeting with my key leaders of all three of my schools right here in sunny Florida. We just did it a couple weeks ago, and I let them know. I said, listen, one of the ways that I assess you as a staff member of your current leadership level, one of the ways, of course, is time management, making sure that they're really managing their time well and doing a great job at it so they're not wasting time, of course. Balance is huge to me and making sure that they're balanced in all areas of their life. But one way I can assess if they're balanced in all areas of their life, Mavon, is really by their social media. You know, it's their brand. It tells me, are they loyal to this company? And, and you know, I'm dealing with, you know, $2.3 million companies here that I need to make sure that we enroll students, right? And so students are going to enroll because of happy staff. And it's a really great way for me to assess the loyalty and how they're spending their time. You know, are they really sold out to my mission and my vision of my company? You know, when they're not, I, I get concerned. And I had recently in 2013, we lost over $70,000 in one of my companies. And that was not a happy situation. My key leader of that school I really thought, wow, should I fire him? And, you know, I love him. I think he's a great guy. I think he has a lot of attributes. But I started to peruse on his social media. I didn't find some things that I really wanted to find. And to be honest with you, it was quite interesting how he was not promoting the school whatsoever and that his private life, his personal life, was what was really affecting his employment. And so I just went in. I didn't fire him, no. You know, I went in, and, you know, I always fire based on performance, obviously, not on social networking. But I went in asking. You know, as an employer, I always recommend just go in asking, say, what's going on? You know, I saw on your social media, this is what I saw. And so what do you think that you could do differently? You know, Mafan, I think it's really smart because Paul Mitchell schools have 110 schools across the nation, and they're growing. It's an incredible franchise. We have great system set up in our company. So my question for you on the call, what kind of systems are set up in your companies? And we have a social media policy in our schools, which is actually an employee in our employee handbook that they sign, of course. And I just want to kind of share some of the key points that we have in our employee handbook and something to kind of keep in mind too as you're listening on the call, whether you're an employee or an employer on the call today. But one of the key points is, you know, quote unquote, employer employees are strictly prohibited from disparaging the school, partners, vendors, employers, employees, students, clients on publicly available websites, blogs, or any other social media. Is that in your written policy? The next one is another key point we have written is if you have concerns about your workplace, you should seek to resolve these issues with discussion with your supervisors. The next one is questions to ask yourself. And this is right in our employee handbook. Is would this public expression, if discovered, impair my ability to work with my colleagues or students on a friendly basis? Would it cause others outside the school to unfavorably view the school. And the last one is, would it upset, insult, or otherwise make our partners, vendors, or clients unhappy? If the answer is yes, or if you have any doubt whatsoever, refrain from this communication. And then the other thing that's written in our school policy is you may not use the school logo or trade without any permission from the elementary school. And the okay. last thing that we have is you may not fraternize with students. And I have found, and I have actually fired a couple of our staff members because they had posted on social networking pictures of them hanging out with the future professionals and drinking. Of course, I didn't just outright fire, you know, from seeing that. But, of course, I printed them off. I put them in their file. We had conversations. Of course, we wrote them up of the few times that we saw it, and then there was just one too many times with some of these staff members, and and so that is such a great way to go undercover 
as a boss. And, you know, let me ask you this, you know, fail, or the last thing that's in there says failure to follow these policies may result in disciplinary action up to including discharge. This is in writing in our employee handbook and we go over this every single year. I've been a business owner for 17 years, a Paul Mitchell school owner for 10 and, and we're very, very clear of our expectations. So as an employer, are you very clear of your expectations? And you know, I've been begging and asking all of my staff to get on social media because of the power of the media to get on there to try to get people to enroll in our schools and also really to kind of showcase the talent that we already have. And it's interesting how, you know, I keep asking and then they don't do it. And then I did this, you know, very serious, you know, reinvention meeting and asked them once again, you know, to do it. And I had it in writing and they both they all said to me, they said, Tina, we're so glad that you were very clear in your expectations of what you wanted us to do. And I actually show them, I lead by example. So as an employer, do you lead by example? You know, look at your last 10 posts that you have. For instance, on Facebook, what does it show? What does it show your brand? What does it show that you're really interested in? You know, are you interested in your company? You know, if not, why not? You know, what are you going to do about it? So. There's my uh, couple cents worth for you, Mafan. What do you think? Okay, that's awesome. I just wanted to ask you a quick question, you know, because I'm sure most people on this call know that the poster girl for this uh, topic would be uh, the XPR exec. Her name is Justin Sacco. Her name is Justin Sacco, and, and she was the one that tweeted, um, I think she's about to get on the flight, and then she tweeted, um, I think it was. I'm going to Africa. Hope oh, I don't catch AIDS. AIDS. Yeah, just kidding. I'm white, and and it, it was such a it it caused such an outrage. So she would be the 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 poster girl for this because most people are still under the illusion that their social media life is totally separate from who they are mm -hmm. as a person or as a brand and. For everything, I mean, we have the the people in the in government, like Senator Wayne, I think that's his name, and and people that just generally make the same mistakes over and over again using social media, thinking that their lives are totally separate from what they post, and like everybody should know that. What what would you say to that, if in in line with what you just said? I. I Mafan, I agree. If I had a staff member that posted something like that, um, I would immediately fire them as well. You know, just knowing even just the repercussions because that's just, to me, that's just morally disgusting, you know, to even write something like that. It's just ridiculous. But, you know, it just goes back to our written policy. You know, I would go and asking and say, hey, did that upset or insult? you know, anyone on there, yeah, it did, you know, and it's, that's just a really, it's a bad situation, so honestly, um, I think she is a poster child, I think she's going to be a great example for us as, as employers <laughs> to use with our staff to say, hey, this is not going to be tolerated, and honestly, I mean, I do evaluations every single month, I do one-on-ones, I do quarterly evaluations, I go, as an employer, I go and asking everything in their life, because the dark always exposes the light and it will affect your company in one way or another. It's really important that you know my company does well financially. I, I want to give back to all of my staff and to my communities and so I know that my greatest asset is my people and when my people are balanced and they're together then I know that I'm going to have a successful company and, and actually social networking is a way to go undercover. It's a great way to see and assess where yeah. my staff is really at. So trust me, I go on their sites and I check them out and I see what they're doing. I want to see if they should be appointed in the next key leader position because this is very important to me. This companies are my life. I've given everything. I've mortgaged my homes. You know, I, I've given everything I have in my life to make these work. So trust me, I'm going to make it work and I'm going to make sure that the people that work with me are my partners and they're my associates. I love my staff. I will do anything for them. And social networking is just a great way to really assess where they're at in their life and if they should be appointed in their position that they're in. Great. That's awesome. All right. Now we're going to go to Carrie. Uh, hi, Carrie. Based on what Tina has said so far, 
um, you're the expert at uh, moving from just existing to actually leaving, um, moving from just a nine to five or a boring thing to your dream job. But a lot of people do not understand that part of what makes that process easy is social media. Um, for instance, for you, it's easy to get the word out about what Carrie is doing or what he has moved into, what his core is right now. From once on your, on your, you know, either your Facebook post, I'm, I'm part of one of your, your group pages. It's easy to see you go in there and say, this is what I'm about. I'm about igniting souls. And so this is, I mean, I don't just see random tweets and posts about things on that page. I see things in line with what I should do. So back to you. Based on the question I just asked Tina, a lot of people think their lives are different from what is on their, on their uh, social media feed. What would you say, and, and from your experience, could you give us a background of, of how this does affect people on their jobs, getting from day job to dream job kind of sure. example? Sure. Well, first of all, it's great to be here, and I was taking notes because Tina, wow, what an awesome leader, and you can tell that she is a great boss, and she leads by example, so great mm -hmm. choice, Mafan of picking her. I want people to think of themselves as a brand, each person individually as well as if you're part of a company. But you yourself are a brand. Tom Peters came out with an article in 1997 called The Brand Called You. And he was saying that we are our own brand, which is so true. I like to say it like this. You're the CEO of a cool little company called YOU. All right? Awesome. So we're each the CEO of us. When you go on someone's social media, just imagine my fun. Imagine that you go through a drive through restaurant and one day you order from your favorite drive through restaurant and you get your favorite meal. The next day you drive through there and you get something completely different. Let's say tacos. Then the next day you drive through and you get steak and potatoes. The next day you drive through you get macaroni and cheese. In other words, if you would go visit a restaurant that was known for a particular dish and each time you go to that restaurant it's something completely different or if we use this same illustration with radio you turn on your favorite channel and you love classical music. The next day you turn it on and it's rap. The next day you turn it on and it's rock music. You're going to get brand confusion mm -hmm. and you're going to eventually tune this station out or turn this, tune this restaurant out. Mm -hmm. That's the way many people use social media. In the morning they're posting about uh, the government. In the afternoon they're posting about their favorite team. Then they post about a picture from their, um, you know, they're frustrated and angry that the product wasn't delivered right. Then they're selling themselves in the evening. And what people do is they don't realize that they are a radio station. It's called Twitter. Or they are a radio station. It's called Facebook Posts. So when you say that my brand is knowable, it's because I've literally tuned every channel on social media to the same message. And clarity attracts while um, lack of clarity repels. No one wants to follow someone who's confused as a brand. Does that make yeah. sense? Yep. Can I give one more analogy really quick? Oh yeah, go ahead. There was a gentleman the other day who posted on Facebook innocently, but he said, I have my own conference coming up does anyone in Canada, in its province, have a camcorder I can use for a week? Now again, most people say, oh, what's the big deal? He's just trying to ask around. Yet when you broadcast that to your future clients in a mm -hmm. global way, think about what that statement's saying. I don't have the resources to get a camcorder for a week. 
Mm -hmm. And those are your future clients. I tell people when I coach them, you need to show up filled up. Filled up, yeah. You don't go to your clients and say, hey, I want to coach you for $100 an hour, but I don't have a camera. Does anyone here have a camera? Anybody? Raise your hand. <laughs> and what you're doing is you're actually subtly communicating the fact that you don't have clarity. You don't have resources. You don't have the means to provide for your business. And that is telling your clients in a subtle way, don't buy from me because I, I don't even... I don't even have the resources to run my own business. Yeah, great, great, Carrie. But now, now that you say that, I'm like, oh my God, Carrie said we should only broadcast one message. Isn't that now? I'm, I'm feeling like, oh my God, he has given me homework because now I have to actually go and discover what message I want to pass across, which then leads me back to discovery. And I'm like, okay, is this a chain reaction kind of thing? Can you walk me through the process of, before sure. you broadcast a message, like for instance, some people go about saying, oh, I've started a food blog, everybody log on, and then they go like, oh, there's a leadership thing I'm about. And what if you say, um, you know, tune all your channels to one message, I'm like, oh my God, Carrie, I'm versatile, I'm not just one. Sure. Uh, message. For instance, I go to people's Facebook posts, and this is the truth, and they just have leadership quotes, and I'm thinking, seriously, is that your whole life? I mean, I don't know anything about you just from leadership quotes. In fact, I'm actually turned off sure. by their... I feel it's pretentious. Sure. Just leadership quotes every day. No, that's not... I want to see you. I want to know about you. So yeah. what would you say? what would you say about that? So I would say that we want to see the person behind the brand, but we want to see that lens. For instance, John Maxwell, he looks at life through leadership lens. Dave Ramsey, you get a little background? Uh, yeah, I can hear Dave, Dave Ramsey looks at life through a financial lens. You know what I'm saying? And so the point is that you don't need to just say one topic, but it's you looking at life through that lens. Yeah. Sorry, Carrie. Let me just get that fixed. Toby, I can hear a feedback from someone. Would you help me deal with that? Thank yeah, you. Yeah, I'll work on it. No? Okay, yeah. Um, well, Carrie, can you can, can go I ahead. add to that? Do you mind? Yeah, go for it. Is it yeah. better now? We have a, uh, like a clear certified policy in our schools of three to one. So for instance, you know, three, maybe quotes or something that really, you know, depicts not only professional but physical, intellectual, emotional, and spiritual. And then the next one would be something towards the business. So, hey, enrolling now at Palm Beach of the school or, because you're right, Mavon, what if I just kept putting on there, enroll now on Paul Mitchell, they're going to be like, I'm not enrolling in Paul Mitchell because she asked me like 25 times today. And yeah. so they want to see that that person has integrity. People are looking for integral people. I mean, I think, you know, we just have such really an incredible world out there. I don't see the lens of negativity. I see that people don't wake up to be mean or to be stupid or not smart. People wake up in the morning and want to make a difference. And so show that, broadcast that. Stop showing your drama. You know, don't <laughs> show that you're drunk. You know, they're looking for integral leaders in their lives. And that's what I train and teach all of my staff. You know, our future professionals look to you as their mentor. What's the best way to showcase that? Because I know when you came to work here for us, that you came to really make a difference in their life. So how is it that your social network marketing, and I I'll love what Carrie said, bit, just okay. really that Go your for. personal brand. That's great. Um, oh yeah, she's still talking. Okay, I can hear Tina. I cannot hear Carrie. Hi Carrie, are you on? I am, can you hear me? Okay, yes, I can hear you now. Awesome. Yeah. Great. And I like what Tina said, and I like what you just said. Look, there's a brand, but people right. want to see the person behind the brand. For instance, 
uh, someone goes on my Facebook page right now, and yeah, Facebook is my drug of choice. I do not understand Twitter. I'm like, <laughs> I've tried to have this relationship. I haven't had a talk with my publisher, and he was like, you need to get on Twitter. And I said, I honestly, I know. I know I need to, but can we just stick with Facebook for now um, until someone else can handle that? So, so whatever is fun. your... Yes. Can, can I say something to that real quick? Yes, please go ahead. Because I want to free you up. <laughs> <laughs> I think that you use the social media of your choice and use it well. In other yeah. words, I don't think, you know, because there's so many. Yeah. And it's better to have, in my opinion, a strong presence on one or two channels than mm -hmm. to be very, you know, inch Spread deep out. on yeah. nine of them, you know. Yeah. So yeah. be free, I, sister. <laughs> I believe that too because can I, um, it works. Can I, it does work for me and, and it works for Tina as well. I'm sure she can testify to that yeah. uh, from someone who was like, no, I don't want to do any social media stuff. Now she's all over Facebook and, and there you go. she was even telling me yesterday, oh, you have to get on Instagram. Okay, so... I like what you said about people wanting to know the person behind the brand. For instance, I'm funny. I am not, and I'm funny, but then there's a serious side of me. I'm not going to, to push away the fun because I want people to see the serious. That to me would be a contradiction um, of who yeah. I really am. So, so there's that. Now, in line with what Tina said, Carrie, that um, business owners right now, like she said, I've invested my whole life into this business. I'm not just going to give it away because someone says, hey, I should not check their, their social media um, um, post or thing. What would you say to that? Because some other people are going, oh, my God, really? She checks her, her employees' um, pages. Is that really the way to get to know them? Isn't she missing something? What would you say about that? I think I think Tina's brilliant because here's <laughs> why. We only do relationship when we have shared values. You see yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, can relationship. You explain that? Okay. So if I'm gonna be in a very tight relationship with someone, in other words, employee, employer, that employee yeah. is out there representing our brand mm -hmm. and if their social media demonstrates that they don't have shared values mm -hmm. with the brand in fact their values are actually opposite or off-brand why would you want to trust them in a relationship and put all your chips on them yeah you see what I'm and yeah. I'll tell you what Mafan I know, I'm not going to say the university, I was just sitting down the other day with a Division I um, coach, I won't say what sport, and mm -hmm. this coach was telling me that he, when he recruits his upcoming freshmen, he goes on their social media and he has literally taken off the table scholarships because wow. he says, think about it, the university is giving dollars to this sports mm -hmm. team and mm -hmm. he knows that I either have to make a good investment in this athlete or it's going to be a bad investment and if I give these dollars to this athlete who mm -hmm. on social media he said he said what they put on social media for the world to see mm -hmm. I wondered what he was doing privately wow you see what I'm saying? because wow, now yeah. he's going to be an athlete representing that school and trust me, it will be in the headlines. If, yeah. if this athlete, you know, makes an idiot of himself, it's going to be all over national news. And now the the university's hurt. Yeah. So we're we're seeing what Tina's saying in in scholarship and athletes as well. Also. Hmm. Can I add to that, Mafan? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Actually, um, got recruited by a Division One college to play football as a quarterback and. And he's been very integral as, you know, 18, 19 year old on his Twitter posts and Facebook posts. And, and that's exactly what happened with him. They, um, another school started to recruit him away from this other college and they started to look at his Facebook and his Twitter and they started to 
um, contact him and said to him, hey, um, you seem to be a really spiritual you know, uh, guy, he's 20 now, and, and he's like, yeah, I am, and you know, how do you know? And while well, I was looking at your Facebook and your Twitter posts that you have, and that's exactly the kind of guy we want on our team. We want somebody with integrity, and so we're pretty excited about our choice here. So there he actually go. got recruited away, so I'm glad you brought that up, Carrie. Yeah, well, that's and weird. I like what you said, Tina, because you're saying that social media, see, we, we, we've been talking a little bit about the negative and the mm -hmm. fear that we can have for bad stuff we post. Look at what Tina just said. It can mm -hmm. actually, it can actually set you up well. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 Actually, to add to that, I have a staff member. He's been working for me for three years, right here in Fort Myers, Florida, and and his posts are incredible. And another one, and I'm thinking of putting both of them into leadership positions because of their gratitude that they have towards the company. The biggest thing you can show up with as an employee is gratitude. And trust me, we want people, we're human, employers are human. We want people that are grateful to be employed by us. And social networking is such a positive way to show that. When you're showcasing to your friends and family, you're showing me that you love working for our company. And who else do we want promoting our business than someone that loves our company? You know, and as Carrie said, I've had staff that never post one thing or give a love note or even anything on social <laughs> networking, no gratitude whatsoever. They no longer work for my company. You know, I've been <laughs> employing for 17 years, and gratitude is the greatest thing you can show up with. So you want a promotion, start putting on your posts, you know, how much you love being a part of a company, you know, show the culture, show who you are and what you love about it. So that's a great thing to show up with. I'm glad you said that, Carrie. Wow, I think that's a powerful tip, Carrie, that um, because it does resonate with, with any of us in high-level management that once we see someone who either sends us a thank you message explaining what they have got from the culture of the company does something to us as employers. We literally, in the company I work for, the CEO literally just sends me messages oh, with, with a text, oh my God, this person gets it. Not because they actually did not mess up. There was a lady that, you know, messed up and she messed up real bad and then she sent a message saying, thank you for the opportunity to, to even mess up because I know that you know, perfection is not the goal here. Growth is, and then you have nurtured me. And everybody did not even remember the mistake. We we're all like, oh my God, she understands the culture of the company. So yeah. that's a great tip, Tina. Like, mm -hmm. if you're an employee of, or if you ever want to get into somebody's good books, start with social media. Start with how grateful you are about the person, about Tell them what they have done to you in your life. Um, to carry, do you have anything to add to that? Because I think Tina just made a, an awesome point right there. Yeah, I look at social media as really who we are, probably in the most raw and real sense. In other words, it's us, if we choose to, without masks. And mm -hmm. now instead of our little secret conversations in a private room. Now the whole world, we've, we've actually said that. We want the whole world to listen in. Yes. I think that businesses that really want to gain customers, because we talked a little bit about that. Tina did. Um, you know, it would be wrong for Tina, as she mentioned, if she was always pitching Paul Mitchell. Mm -hmm. Think about social media as really who you are um, outside. So... For instance, I would never just sit down with a stranger and say, hey, I got a program. Do you want to buy it? Um, mm -hmm. Let me tell you about it. Like, you just don't do that in human relationships, yeah. right? Yeah, so true. neither should you do that in social media. Michael Hyatt says, give 20 gives for every one ask, right? Mm -hmm. And what you want to do is also be generous, if you found someone else's article to be very fascinating and on topic with your brand, retweet it, share it. Because trust me, these people that have, quote, bigger platforms than you currently, they will see that and take notice. 
And if you yeah. show up constantly as someone who's always giving them kudos and support and endorsement, then later when you come out with a book or an article, they will most likely uh, be much more willing to retweet that. See, that's the big myth in my industry, uh, authors, personal growth. Whenever somebody comes out with a product, they're like, hey, big person, will you, will you retweet this to your 200,000 followers? You got to be building that relationship up six yeah. months before and yeah. highlighting them. And that's just the way we do human relationships. And so think mm -hmm. of social media as an extension to that. Great. That's great. Now, I need to go to the question because I think a lot of people are disillusioned sometimes because knowing all this that we know, we've all, we've all said things about social media, but guess what? Half of the listeners already know this. Um, they need a bit of reminder, but deep down they, they somehow already know this. Now, why do we fall under the illusion sometimes that it doesn't matter? Like, for instance, this lady that I said, I'll post the girl for this, for this topic. She's a PR exec. You would not think that anybody <laughs> in PR, of right. all things, I mean, she's, an, she's not even a low-time public relations. She knows about the platform. She knows that these things matter. But it then shows me, or like the senators, or, you know, we hear about men of God that have sent naked pictures to girls. And we see this happening day in, day out. Why do you think? And it's why I'm asking this, because it's funny to think that it would not affect us. I mean, look, it's like someone saying, oh, 80% of people get divorced, and we just say, oh, no, it won't happen to me. Never. Sure. Now, people are making mistakes even when they know the things that we have said. Why do you think they're doing that, and how can we avoid making the same mistakes? You want me to go, or Tina, you want to go? Wh whichever. Yeah, whichever. You could start, and then Tina, Tina goes. Okay. So here's a big quote for the day. You can tweet this. <laughs> Social media doesn't ruin you. It reveals you. Hmm. In other words, most people have their smartphone here, their thoughts here, and whatever they think, boom. There's no filter. There's no filter between the two. Wow. You know, trust me, I have thoughts plenty of times during the day too. Someone cuts me off. I think something, but yeah, the, the benefit yeah. is I don't tweet it, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. I don't tweet what I think. We need to mm -hmm. filter and say, okay, gut check, if what I'm going to say is read by my biggest enemy, my yeah. biggest friend, you know, we almost need to do a checklist in our minds and really say, okay, this is going to go out to the world, is that mm -hmm. okay? And if the yeah. answer is yes, then post it. Even like you said, even our mistakes, because you're right, Mafan, mm -hmm. sometimes those are the biggest trending topics is when mm -hmm. we say, hey, you know, I'm about to go out on the stage and I'm nervous. Mm -hmm. Can you shoot up a prayer for me? You know, yeah. and everyone's yeah. like, whoa, he struggles too. That's True. awesome, you know? So again, it's what do you want to communicate? You don't have to make sure that you know there's no humanity to your tweets no yeah. but you do need to say if this was going to be read by my mom <laughs> or by yeah. my grandma or whatever my spouse just do a filter first yeah yeah that's great uh, Tina uh, why I think this is great for you is because you you said that this has already been embedded in the you know the employee, the employee kind of handbook. Um, <laughs> will what you are about to post hurt someone? There's, mm. there's like a guidelines to it, and and people need to ask themselves this question before they post things. And that's why I was so glad when uh, Facebook came up with the edit button on there. You know how before when you post something, you're like, oh my god, I'm done, I'm finished. But now, just somebody replying. And, and making you know that, um, okay, that thing I said didn't come out right. You can edit stuff. And I have 
you know, we, we, we're not perfect. We're not saying all of a sudden Carrie becomes perfect or Tina becomes perfect. No, sometimes we will actually want to rant on Facebook or we will want to celebrate something the whole world doesn't think is worth celebrating or you know how people post pictures of their children and other people are like, oh my God, I'm tired already of this person and his child. It's, it's your medium, but you control you control that. So Tina, I'd like you to talk on what Carrie just said as um, when you when you why do people think this deal doesn't concern them or this deal would not affect them in line with what you already have in your employee handbook? You know, it's funny that you would say that because this is affecting my staff every single day. I still see posts that I would rather not see of my staff and the question is, am I really clear? with them and I know and I love what Carrie said because we always say hey if your grandma would read it then go ahead and post it and there's a few posts that I put on there and said you know what that came off a little bit negative you know Tina be careful about you know posting anything about politics because if you're posting something that's going to create some drama or negativity it shouldn't be on there but you know everything rises and falls on leadership I think about you know, this woman, you know, with this Africa incident, you know, that revealed, I love what he said, it revealed her true character. She didn't delete it. You know, she posted it, but she did not delete it. And so I would wonder with my staff, you know, if she posted that, what else is she going to post? Or what has she done that I didn't even know about? And, and so as an undercover boss, if you will, you know, I'm looking at those things. I'm looking to make sure there's not drama. I'm using it as an opportunity to coach my team. I'm finding out, you know, what is it that's missing in their personal life that's affecting their professional life? Because we're not just professional only individuals where you know we're personal too you know we're physical we're intellectual emotional and spiritual human beings we're not human doings and and so as an employer of course I'm gonna go in asking and I have asked several future professionals in our schools and staff to delete posts at many many times it probably happens more often than not and they will you know you just ask them you know would you mind deleting it and then in the future what do you think that you could do you know just ask those powerful questions you know, to your team, to your staff, to your students, you know, what is that they're revealing, you know, to the world. So why they post it, I think it's exactly because they're not balanced in their life and they need a coach, you know, hey, I'm talking to a coach right here, Mafan Ekpo, you know, I would recommend Mafan to any single person, you know, in this world. I have a coach, for goodness sakes, you know, I need somebody to hold me accountable to all the areas of my life as well too so they post it because they're human beings you know as Carrie said they're not human doings and we all make mm -hmm. mistakes and you know so what are you gonna do about it what do you how are you gonna think differently and how are you gonna coach your team you know everything rises and falls on leadership and that you know has to do with not only having those policies but are you going over and over and over you know repetition is the mother of all skill you know, just constantly, you know, checking back and, you know, holding that accountability is important. Great. Carrie, can you repeat that, that uh, you said this is a big quote. Yeah. Can you repeat that? Um, yeah. I'm putting quote. that on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I said social media doesn't ruin you, it reveals you. Okay, great. Social media doesn't ruin you, it reveals you, because I saw Ogona looking for his pen, like, where is my pen? I need to write on this quote. Yeah, yeah I saw you. <laughs> yeah, okay. no, and I think, um, you know, Tina is a, her company would be a, a cool place to work, because someone who cares that much, you know, we can all sense that, and her her edifying you, Mafan, and your coaching skills, I know you are a a tremendous coach and I have a coach yeah. so I have a coach who I call them a truth teller mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. see when people see your social media posts do they care enough to tell you hey man uh, the way that came off yeah. I don't know if you meant it but this is what I felt yeah and a lot of times we don't have people that love us enough to yeah. say that and I'm married to one <laughs> <laughs> I'm married to my coach too, um, but my wife will tell me, um, you know, hey, that just had a tone to it. Did you mean that? 
She won't control me, but she'll say, did you mean that? And that's what a good coach does. They ask questions. Mm -hmm. I like that. I like that because that, that does mean that you have people that, that literally it's almost like they watch over you. They are friends. Right. Hey, they read what you put on Facebook. It's, almost, it's also like an accountability. For instance, if someone points that out to you, Carrie, and you go like, why are you in my business? Please, this is my social media yeah. platform. I'm allowed yeah. to rant. Mm -hmm. The person is not likely to do that the next time. Um, right. To point that out to you the next time. Right. So, with social media, we have to be able to take a step back and yep. look at it through the eyes of someone else. And this happens in almost every facet of life. I mean, even before this call, I was freaking out like, oh my God, is everything set up? Blah, blah, blah. And then she <laughs> said, you're being such a brat. And I was like, oh, how dare you? But. <laughs> I can really take a step back and say, yeah, I'm actually being such a brat, but nobody has actually called me out on that because I'm trying to get everything so set up. And, and for it, it, it applies throughout life. I also call them truth tellers. They're, they're people who just really have to call you out on your stuff and say, um, there was a time, like you said, I posted on, 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 on Facebook. I like the song. There's a musician called Dibanj in Nigeria. He'd done with Snoop, Doggy Dog. And I liked it. But I didn't like the song because of the song. I liked the song because I saw Snoop with a Nigerian passport and the Nigerian flag. And I thought, oh, my God, someone from Nigeria is singing with Snoop. And then I put it on Facebook, I love this. And then someone said, sent me a message and said, really? You love the naked girls in the song and the use of, you know, he literally tore up what I said. And wow. I'm like, oh, so defensive, like, oh my God, that's not what I meant. I meant, like, didn't you see Snoop dug it up with a Nigerian flag and a Nigerian passport? He's like, that's, that's not what you said. You said you love this song. And so I had to take a step back and say, yeah, true. I don't really love the song. <laughs> I just love that Snoop was with the Nigerian passport. So yeah, we have to take a step back. Right now, I'm gonna ask the people. We added, we kind of not didn't add everybody because of the sound thing. So sure. we we added like people who sound the control. So there's Ogonna right now, and I think there is Ronke. Ronke, you we are like disappearing and reappearing and disappearing. But I understand <laughs> because that always happens to me when I'm in Nigeria. I'm like, oh my god, I've lost the call and then I'm back on and then I'm lost and then I'm back. So do you have any question for Carrie or Tina or me? I just want to hear your voice. So even if you have no question, please speak. Hey, good evening, people. Hi, good evening, good uh, morning, good afternoon. Thank you for the call. I have actually learned a lot from what you've been discussing. And um, I think it's very important that can you hear me clearly? Yeah. Oh, yeah, we can. Okay, yeah. So I think it's very important that we are very clear about um, what we tweet and what we post on social media. And um, I also think it's very important that, um, like Gary said, that we need to build relationships. Uh, I've heard it, I've heard it um, in the room that um, we have to come out. I actually, what would I do? I actually fall into the bracket of those who who post leadership quotes and all of, all of those kind of stuff. And, um, you know, and, I, and really I noticed that that people, you can get one or two likes, but people don't really feel you. Yeah. So you come out to share something that is a little more personal, maybe like mm -hmm. your opinion on the issue, or your opinion about the quotes you posted, not necessarily just the quote. So yeah. I think um, getting personal is key. In mean, this part of the world, uh, people are not very keen about getting very personal, you know. But it's it's something we have to start doing. I think I think um, um, from this part of the world, a lot of argument on social media, a lot of Twitter fights, a lot of um, uh, politicians, people are fighting over bad governance and all of that. And sometimes no real interaction takes place. Yeah. You know, so, so, Nigerians on the call, the, we have to think about that. We can build relationships. A lot of um, 
Sometimes it doesn't get the way that group, so I'm not going to relate to him. I think uh, it's high time we broke all those boundaries. Now, discuss intelligently, and I believe we make a lot of problems to do that if we do it that way. Okay, so thank awesome. You. Yeah, we can hear you. I could hear you in and out, but I, I got the the core of what you were saying. Like, yes, and I understand that a lot of people don't get um, that personal. And yeah, I have comments here from Tech Three Sixty NG. Someone loved what Carrie said. Said, "Oh, Carrie made a great point." And yeah, that happens to me too when someone misinterprets what you mean. Okay, so we go to Ron Care. Hi, Ron Care. Let me talk to you now before you disappear again. Uh, Toby, can I hear her? Is she uh, muted? Yeah, she needs to unmute her mic. Okay, uh, Ronke, you might need to unmute your mic. It seems that it's muted. Okay. No, no, no. You need to unmute it. You just. How does she unmute it? Is there uh, something there is a... on the? Yeah, she needs to click on the drop down you see uh, just uh, on top of the, of your top of your thumbnail. Okay, there's a there's like a microphone with a slash across it. That's that's yes. on that's so mute that. and unmute. Yeah, you might need to click that, but just if you can see it, let us know. If not, just you could write down if you have a question and stuff. You were the two quiet ones. That's why we. We kept you guys on, and thank you for joining. I I know there are some other people. I think I heard something. Did you say something? Are you muted? Is she unmuted? No. Hi, Ronke. Oh no, she's not yet unmuted. Okay. So someone said they have a question for Tina. So it's a it's a message that came on. Oh, please ask your question if. Tech 360 NG. Um, if you have a question for Tina, please ask your question, but you're typing in, so I'm sure you're typing in the question. So just as you're typing in the question, I'll just say this in, in wrapping this up. Um, if someone said, what would my key, um, key advice be on this topic, the purpose-driven tweet, it would be that you should tweet and post as you want to be, not as you are right now. Um, all of us want to be something extraordinary. Nobody says, I want to fail or I want to be the, the least popular person. Every one of us has aspirations for something. So post on social media as you want to be not as you are, that takes care of, for instance, if you're, if you're about to, to rant on something. Imagine yourself 10 years ahead as you really want to be and ask yourself, would that person that I want to be post this kind of thing? It would stop you dead in your tracks sometimes. Sometimes just imagine what I want to be stops me from posting a whole lot of stuff on, um, on social media. Okay, so I think the, the person is trying to write stuff, but I just want to say thank you all for, for joining this call. We're just about to round up because it's top of the hour. And, but go ahead and ask your questions still. We'll, I'll be on just in case. And I want to thank Harry for coming on. He's an awesome friend of mine, and you can find him at for those of you watching via YouTube, because I know that the majority of you are watching via YouTube, it's www.dayjobtodreamjob.com. That's www.dayjobtodreamjob.com. And Tina, you can find her at Tina Black. Is that tinablack.net, yeah? Mm -hmm. That's correct. Great. So you can find her at tinablack.net. Or you just go to Facebook. That is her, also her drug of choice um, <laughs> in line with, with other things. And yes, I think that the question has come in from Tina. So let me just see that. Uh, Toby, can you see the question? I yes, can. okay. The question is, from your experience on digital media, 
most accounts are run by PR or employees. How do you handle the person and the business purpose or objectives? Um, yeah. That was the question. From your experience on digital media, most accounts are run by PR um, companies or employees. How do you handle that? I'm thinking him or and the business purpose or objectives. Uh, can you clarify what you think that means, Mafan? I think that means like you know we said oh there's the brand and there's the person um, because. The truth is, for most big companies, the the sometimes John Paul doesn't go to tweet himself. So, um, so some companies like that, yeah, PR people do the tweeting and the um, Facebooking, and and you know, most of the people are too busy to do the tweeting themselves. So a lot of people go like, is it really John Maxwell tweeting at me, or is it really Carrie responding to my post? So I think that's asking how do you then handle the, the person and the business purpose and objectives in line with the fact that PR companies sometimes are the ones that front as the people on social media. Well, I mean, hello, you can't get off of what you're posting or what's on your posts. Uh, our company is very hands-on. Our dean of Paul Mitchell schools, of all of them, Win play ball, he's very hands-on. He puts his own posts. He responds to every one of his own emails. John Paul DeJoria, who's one of the top 50 most uh, recognized billionaires in the com in the country. I don't know if you guys know that or not, but he's my partner in these Paul Mitchell schools, and I know his secretaries very well, and he is very, very careful about who he chooses to represent him. And I can tell you right now that he checks his posts. He makes sure that everything is done well. I hired somebody to take care of my website and to post things for me. You can believe it that I check before it gets posted because spelling errors are one of my biggest pet peeves and I know that my assistant, he'll make several spelling errors and I have to go back and check that because that's so important to represent me well. So no matter what, you are responsible for what is put onto your networks. I check my schools, all three of them, every single day and make sure the posts are accurate and they're integral and that they represent me because in the end this company says Paul Mitchell the school but it really says Tina Black and I know that awesome. I have to represent myself well I take that very seriously and awesome. I hope my staff does too because they're representing <laughs> me I'm signing their paychecks you know they're representing me yeah great Carrie do you want to respond to that too Hi, Carrie. I think, yeah, you're muted. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you now. <laughs> yeah. I, under I understand the temptation to want to outsource that. I think what yeah. Tina just said is a great example. You might outsource it, but you still do quality control. Yeah. And let's face it, people want to connect with a person, not a corporate brand. Mm -hmm. When mm -hmm. Michael Hyatt was CEO of Thomas Nelson, which was a publicly traded company, one of the largest publishers in the world, he still had his own Twitter, Facebook, website. The, Tony uh, Hesch of Zappo Shoes. I mean, we could go Tom Blake Mikowski at Tom Shoes. There's so many people out there that are, quote, the leaders of these companies, and yet they have their own personal brand because they realize that their followers don't want a lot of corporate crap. You know, they want the the person. We we fall in love with a person. We follow a person. And so yeah. don't forget to make that personal. Great. That's awesome. Um so Carrie's on Facebook. His name, you can follow him and stalk him and send him messages. He's Carrie, K A R Y, Oberbrunner, that's O B E R B R U N N E R. So I'll spell it again. Carrie is K A R Y, Oberbrunner is O B E R B R U N N E R. 
and Tina Black is Tina Black. So that is T I N A B L A C K. I think you'll see many Tina Blacks, but um, I like it. I like that. Yeah, Machi. I was I was teasing her. I said, "What if your name was Pink? Then you'd be Pink Black." <laughs> I'd have to wear pink then. <laughs> there you go. So she's on Facebook too. I think you you'd see if you see Tina Black and you see Paul Mitchell School. You'd know that's her. I I call her a branded lady. She's branded. Carrie's branded too. With you can find all my and social so. networking sites right on my website, tinablack.net. You click on them. It's in the upper left hand corner. You can find me. I'm very easy to find. Bingo. There you have it. And I am Mfon Echo. Thank you for for getting on the call. Thank you for all those who are listening later. Thank you for all those on YouTube. I've had an amazing day and I have learned a lot from you guys and to those who we allowed on the Google Hangout, sorry for all those who we had to block out because of the sound. Thank you Ronke, although I didn't hear your voice and thank you Ogona and you can visit us at www.thediscoverycenter.com Center is C-E-N-T-R-E www.thediscoverycenter.com Have a nice day. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thank Bye. You. And thank you, Toby. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Thank he you, Tina. Thank you, sound and He's my social media specialist. And he's in India. <laughs> awesome. Bye, guys. And have thank fun. You. Have a great day. Um, thank Bye. you.